So, I'm a first generation Australian. I was born here in 1974 to parents who had emigrated from Scotland in 1968. Mum's side of the family also has Irish roots, Belfast Catholic to be precise, with my great-grandfather having been born there in 1883, and Dad's side has at least some roots in England as well, with my grandmother having traced the family there back to the mid-1820s, and I think it was her grandmother or maybe her great-grandmother that arrived in Scotland in 1877. So, I have pretty solidly Anglo-Celtic ancestry for at least the last couple of hundred years, and probably a fair bit longer than that. Now, the whole concept of Anglo-Celticness is actually a relatively recent one, going back to about the mid-19th century, and it was kind of a result of what they call the Celtic Revival or the Celtic Twilight. Basically, this was a rediscovery starting in the 19th century of interest in the old Celtic antiquities of Britain and Ireland, and gradually it became part of the broader Romantic movement in Europe, and of a rise in nationalism during the 19th century, particularly in Ireland. Arguably, this has also led to a skewing of what actually constitutes Celticness as such, and the concept is really a lot more complex than most people might think, but for better or worse, the word Celtic has come to have fairly particular connotations these days, and uh, in some hands, those connotations can be turned to unsavoury ends. I discovered Michael Kingsbury, as I think most of us who have heard of him by now did, via Twitter, where he'd been going on something of a blocking spree mostly of Irish and Scottish people. He had this to say on the subject. That's an interesting perspective on things. I've seen it suggested that he's preemptively blocking Irish and Scottish Twitter users so that they can't respond to him and his equally interesting looking proposed TV series Celtics. The latter is rapidly becoming a source of hilarity for a lot of people online for a number of reasons. I actually haven't watched the demo clips and things he's made so far, but they seem to be kind of abysmal, and the whole thing seems to be powered by Michel's general lack of any clue about what he's doing. For a start, Celtics isn't a word, unless you're referring to the basketball team, and that's not how they pronounce it anyway. You want Celts, Michel. And Celts itself is a word of somewhat doubtful roots. We know it comes from the Greek word keltoi, which is first attested in Greek literature around 500 BC. But where did the Greeks get it from? Julius Caesar reported a few centuries later that the people of Gaul described themselves as Celts. But did they get that from the Greeks, or had they always done that? This is one of those fine points of history no one really has an answer to, although Michel is probably certain he knows better. Also, look at the range of gods and heroes he's got lined up in his Twitter header here. Mostly Irish, but not all. First on the left is Aaron Wen, who may not have even existed in the first place. I can't find any coherent information on her. If she did, she was Welsh, and so not actually part of Irish mythology per se. The Celts were never a monolith, even in the British Isles, and the Welsh people were Britonic and separate from the Irish and Scottish, who were Gaelic. I am particularly impressed also by this Twitter post in which he praises the actress playing this putative Welsh deity for her real Irish accent, then goes on to note the show will feature Gaulish accents for reasons of authenticity. Quite apart from the fact that we don't know what an authentic Gaulish accent would even sound like, I don't understand why a Welsh deity would speak with one in the first place. Anyway, next to Erinwen, we have Bellinus, and his presence here in this cast is positively ironic, if not downright comedic. Bellinus was worshipped in Britain, but the real centre of his cult was a city called Aquileia in Italy. And if anything, the cult of Bellinus actually grew during the imperial period, 
He was apparently considered a national god in Noricum, a Celtic kingdom around the modern areas of Austria and Slovenia, that had been allies to the Roman Republic and later part of the Empire for whom they provided weapons that were famous for their hardness compared with what the Romans themselves could make. Considering Mihul's bilious feelings towards the Roman Empire, this amuses me considerably. But it's not about the Roman Empire, is it? Not really. Let's remind ourselves of what he said earlier. It's about the globalists. And when you're as far to the right of politics as Mihul evidently is, the word globalists tends to mean something very specific. He also seems to live in terror of Marxists or neo-Marxists, and this is already manifested in his earlier work, including a trilogy about life in the Soviet gulags. I saw him claim somewhere that when making these, he was actually literally targeted by former communists who shot at him at some point. If this story is true, and I see no reason to believe that it is, then it's a damn shame they missed. And, of course, in certain quarters during the 20th century at least, and probably even now, Marxism was also a sort of shorthand for those people. Kind of ironic given that Karl Marx's family had actually converted to Christianity to get away from anti-Semitism of that sort. This screenshot is particularly telling. It should be said straight up that there is no Book of Danu. The only thing of the sort I can find is what looks like a weird sort of New Age multimedia work by a guy called Patrick Michael Mooney. He looks sketchy himself, being an avowed 9-11 truther, and I suspect that him and Mihul might even get along on some level, but that's not the point. The important thing is there's no book of Danu of the religious text kind that he's purporting to quote here. There aren't even any stories or myths about Danu in the existing Irish texts, and her very name is a linguistic reconstruction that not all scholars even agree upon. Like I said, this stuff is more complicated than most people probably realise. As for what scripture has to say about protecting borders, well, scripture is one of those things that can be made to justify almost anything, depending on what you want it to mean, so there's somewhat mixed opinions about the Bible's opinion on that matter. But, in any case, if the book of Danu was an actually real book, I don't see any reason why it would cite Christian scripture in the first place if it were meant to be some pagan text. And let's face it, the Bible itself has, frankly, always been a handy tool of empire. And of course, it needs to be remembered that the Tuatha de Danann, the people of Danu that were basically the gods of pre-Christian Ireland, were themselves more or less invaders. In Irish mythology, there were six waves of invaders, of which the Danann were the fifth. They displaced the Fir Bolg, who were the fourth wave, and they were in turn displaced by the Milesians, who were the ancestors of the Irish people. You know, the actual Celts that Michal is so keen on. They didn't give a shit about the sovereignty of the tribe of the gods or their national borders that Michal is so worried about. He is, of course, also passionate about freedom of speech, like a lot of people on the far right, and, like a lot of those people, he demonstrates that passion by blocking tens of thousands of social media users. Because their freedom of speech is all fine and well, but not when they use it to reasonably criticise him. Also, I'm surprised to discover it was evidently such a big issue for my ancestors, and apparently the Tanbo Kulnia really depicts the army of Connaught trying to deplatform the men of Ulster, rather than Queen Maeve trying to steal a super stud bull to become as rich as her husband, and Cuchillan was actually a sort of first century Ben Shapiro or something. Look, Michael Kingsbury is a dickhead, and he's delusional. It's the sort of combination that often adds up to comedic potential, and it's even funnier because he's reveling in the negative attention. And it's only convincing him even further that he alone knows the real truth about the Celtics. Good grief. 
The fact that he seems to know so little about the actual mythology doesn't matter. He knows what really happened, and the official history is bunk. It's a bit like the British Israelites, who have their own alternative history, whereby the people of the British Isles are really the lost tribes of Israel. Obviously cranky, but in and of itself, it was kind of harmless originally. But it led to kind of hideous things like the Christian identity movement in the US, and I think a similar impulse underlies Celtics, which is clearly occupying the point where nationalism turns toxic. And I'm fine with my Celtic heritage. It's not controversial for me. It's part of my identity. Some years ago, I read a book by Charles Squire called Celtic Myth and Legend, published in 1905, and that was my first proper exposure to the old stories. And it was great. It was like unlocking a part of my past that I should have explored much sooner. I'm neither confused, nor insecure, nor angry about it. It's my ancestry, and I honour it accordingly. I just don't fetishise it, like Michael Kingsbury. It's not the entirety of who and what I am. I've often suspected that somewhere much further back in my past, I've got a bit of Viking ancestry as well. This is something I obviously can't prove, and if I do have Viking blood in me, it's been well diluted over the centuries. But large parts of Scotland were Norse-owned and controlled up to the 15th century when they finally ceded the last remaining territories. And I've always felt some sort of dim identification with our northern friends. I am one of the least quote-unquote Viking people I know, to be sure, but I still have that sense of them, having been ancestors of mine somewhere too as if the mob from Asgard had been my heritage as much as the Irish ones. They all came from somewhere up north. These days, there's a lot of people claiming the Asgardians as their heritage, and unfortunately, not always for good reasons. I'm not a practicing pagan or heathen myself, but I have watched that community online for quite a lot of years now, and there's been a Nazi-slash-white supremacist problem with the Norse revivalists for a long time. A lot of the far right is built on particularly vicious versions of Christianity like Christian identity, but there's also the anti-Christian contingent whose opposition to Christianity is rooted in good old-fashioned anti-Semitism. And, unfortunately, Australia has played a historical role in that, in the form of Alexander Rudd Mills, who founded a Church of Odin in Melbourne in the mid-1930s, as a front for his Nazi sympathetic activities. If you come across racist heathens describing themselves as Odinists, that's at least partly due to his influence. Not one of our more glorious exports. Now, there's also a lot of anger at those people from within the community. I see a lot of avowed heathens strenuously disavowing the racist scumbags, as they should, obviously, but equally I kind of hate that they should have to. I mean, they take the Norse thing seriously, it resonates with them. They don't see why others should be prevented from sharing in it just on the grounds of them being the wrong skin colour or ethnicity. And it offends them when racist pieces of shit co-opt this thing that matters to them. And I'm sympathetic to that, because that's what Michael Kingsbury is trying to do with my heritage. Like I said, it's not about the Roman Empire and globalism. Everything he says is dog-whistling. Celtic man, Celtic pride, Celtic identity, Celtic heritage. Where Celtic is code for a very particular kind of person globalists meaning another, and the Roman Empire standing in for anyone who's not like us. I know what you're doing, Michal, and I kind of hate you for it. I can't find you quite as comedic as other people do. Or, I should say, I know what you're trying to do, because like I also said, you're an idiot and a troll of evidently minimal gifts, and I don't think there's any real danger of Celtics becoming a thing. I'll be very surprised if it goes any further than the demo reel stage, given that a crowdfunding campaign didn't exactly set the world on fire. It raised more than it should have done, obviously, but not what he was hoping for. <laughs>
And that Kickstarter, by the way, was only asking for $100,000, which wouldn't even be a fraction of what would be needed to pull off his rather dubious vision. Roger Corman would laugh at him for thinking that would be enough for one episode, let alone the multiple series he was apparently envisaging. Obviously, I can't wait to see what his actors do next. I wish I had his self-confidence and self-belief, admittedly as delusional as it may be. I don't admire this sort of thing as such, but it fascinates me even so, because... Let's face it, it does take some amount of guts to be so sure of oneself, to possess that degree of conviction and certainty about your own rightness in the face of scholarly consensus and, frankly, demonstrable fact. But however sure Michael Kingsbury is that he knows the real truth, I don't think we need to worry too much about him being a big player in promoting white supremacy. He just doesn't have the ability. I'm more worried that somehow he might manage to convince someone else that he's right, someone else who does have the ability and the wherewithal to act upon it. Unlikely, but unfortunately you can never be 100% sure. Also, in case you hadn't previously realised or guessed, Michael Kingsbury is American. Not actually Irish, or even living in Ireland. Because he would be, wouldn't he? <laughs>